Well, I think a storm's brewing. And it's so nice listening to the black cockatoos fly by. But uh, yeah, g'day guys. Hope you guys are all doing very well. So we're out here in another traditional swag camp this weekend. But man, Today has been an absolute shocker, honestly. It's been, oh, I can't even describe how bad it's been. I've just been driving around in circles all day. It's about 4.30 in the afternoon, so very late in the day. Um, I got to this area about 10.30 this morning, um, but the park I wanted to go to had a closed sign on it, so I couldn't go there. Got some black hockeys flying by. Such a nice bird. Um, but yeah, so that park was closed, and I tried to go to another state forest. There's a bloody paddock in the gate there, so I couldn't go there. I tried to go to another spot. There was a no camping sign there, and then try to go to another spot again, and that spot was just not a good place to camp. So I finally come to this um, yeah, bushland around here, and it's actually surprisingly quite beautiful. It's actually really nice. Like, yeah, heaps of black hockeys flying around, and quite a nice bushland. So, look, it's not a bad option, um, but yeah, I just wish I had more time, eh? Like, it's 4.30. We've got some pretty dark clouds moving in as well. I think we're meant to get about 20 to 40 mils worth of rain tonight. So, yeah, pretty wet. So, um, it's probably about time we stop dilly-dallying and try and find a nice little place to set up camp. Roll the swag out, get a tarp up, and um, also yeah, I'll show you guys how I got this um, yeah, the swag set up for this trip because I've done a few sort of yeah, um, mods compared to how I had it last time, and it's a much comfier way to yeah, carry it. So I'll show you guys that in a bit. So we've got the creek just running down the bottom there. I was thinking about camping down here somewhere, but it looks like there's a lot of shop around, so probably not the best spot to camp. So I might actually go back up on top of this ridge just up here, where it's sort of nice open bushland, and yeah, we'll probably find a spot up there to camp. And I'd love to just camp up here on top of this rock shelf here. Such a nice spot up here. Just looking out over the, the bush, you've got all the birds flying by. A really nice spot to spend the night. I'd love to just yeah, roll the swag out, but Considering it's going to rain, it's probably not the best idea. I've already got a few puddles there. Um, and I can feel, yeah, when it's going to rain, it's just going to all run off on top of this, <laughs> this rocky art crop. So probably not the wisest idea. So I think we'll um, yeah, tuck back into the trees and we'll yeah, get a tarp above us. Well, you're pretty spot for choice around here. There's so much nice open bushland. It's really lovely. I'm thinking I might go between sort of these two trees just here, probably string the top above there, and then yeah, we'll roll the swag out underneath. And we'll be able to have the fire just out here. It's a nice clear area as well. So I think it's a yeah, pretty good option. All right, so before I take this off, I'll um, quickly show you guys how I've got it set up because yeah, I've sort of altered it compared to I had it last time and this, I think this is the more traditional way. From what I can tell, I've tried to read as much as I can about it and look at pictures and stuff and I think this is the more traditional way that the swagmen used to carry the, yeah, the swag. So first up up front we've got the dilly bag. Inside the dilly bag we've got a tucker bag with all the food um, and any other bits and pieces you kind of want handy throughout the day. So I've got my rain jacket in there, I've got my first aid kit, my PLB, um, two beers, so <laughs> all the priorities. And then, Around here, I've just got um, yeah, a little bum bag because I'm still yet to get a, a haversack. I'll probably get a haversack pretty soon, but inside the, the bum bag, which would be a haversack if I had one, um, I've just got my water, got some camera batteries, another lens, and um, yeah, I think that's about it for then there. And then I'll take, um, I'll take that off for a sec so I can show you guys how this works. So if you have a look at the back of it, so this strap here, Last time I had this strap going from that shoulder across there and it puts so much weight on that one shoulder. Whereas this way, 
it's sort of a, how do I describe this? So basically with this dilly bag, this is tied to a, a tea towel. And so that way the tea towel is nice and soft on your shoulder. And then that's tied, yeah, just to up there. So the idea, I'll take it off so I can show you guys how I put it on. Yeah, so basically that's how it looks. So we've got the dilly bag with a tea towel tied to it. And then that tea towel is tied to basically the strap of the swag and then you've got this strap here. So it's kind of like a backpack. That's how you kind of think of it. So you put this strap on first and then swing that around and then put that over that shoulder. And then like that, it's actually really comfortable. It might look a bit funny, but it's actually a really comfortable way to carry your gear. Um, like it's having sort of, the idea is how you have about one third of your weight up the front and two thirds at the back and that way you kind of walk nice and upright. You're not sort of like um, slouching over you know, like you do with backpacks sometimes. You kind of walk nice and upright. And um, yeah, I guess the idea of this is kind of like a backpack. You kind of have these two straps that come over each shoulders, which kind of shares the load. So it's actually a pretty effective way to carry your gear. It's so funny that like no one does it anymore. It's uh, obviously backpacks are pretty body handy, but um, yeah, I love, I'd love to try and sort of revive this kind of swagman um, history. I think it's a, a really interesting part of our history. So I'd love to try and do a bit more of these videos and maybe other people might be inspired to do some as well. So. How about we get this off? Um, I might even grab the camera and give you guys a bit of a, a close-up of how it's sort of set up. But yeah, so far, I'm um, yeah, quite enjoying it. I haven't obviously walked too far, um, but yeah, it doesn't seem to hurt at all. It seems to be quite comfortable. All right, so give you guys a bit of a close-up. So yeah, just for the dilly bag that's just tied to the tea towel. And that tea towel is tied to a carabiner and then the carabine is also attached to the leather strap. So that way, I figure the carabine is a good, so that way you can sort of just take them off nice and easily, um, rather than having to sort of undo knots and things like that. So yeah, it's only the first time I've used it like this, but um, yeah, so far so good. And I think it's a, yeah, a good start. I'm sure there's things I'm gonna be able to improve on, but it's definitely a good start. Far out, there are so many mozzies around. I didn't even bring any air guard. Actually, I didn't bring any pants either. Usually I bring the zip off pants to this, but I left them at home because it's summer, so I didn't think I need it, but bloody hell. They are everywhere. Man, this is gonna be a fun night. All right, well, I can already hear the thunder, so I think this rain is gonna be any moment. So as much as I sort of love to take my time and explain everything, I think I've got to try and get a tarp up pretty quickly. Try and explain it as I go. All right, so I've just got my titanium yeah, fry pan just sort of tucked into the um, where the straps were. And so just in the fold, just got a, a little um, chopping board, and just my saw. Can you guys see that? Hopefully. Um, yes, yeah, so and then just down down the bottom here, uh, I've just got my 3x3 meter Alton Goods tarp. We've got a yeah, Alton Goods ground sheet. I've also got um, yeah, the Alton Goods bug, uh, box bug net, which I haven't actually used yet. So um, I'm actually pretty glad I bought it. <laughs> like obviously I'm in a swag so I could zip it up, but being summer, um, and this sort of doesn't have any yeah, fly mesh, when you zip it up and get pretty hot inside. so. I think what I will do is I'll have the tarp up um, and then I'll yeah, roll this out, but then I'll probably put this box bug net um, over the swag. And you, you can tuck it in underneath the swag so no crippled crawlers can sort of crumb up, um, crawl up, but also give me some good protection from the mozzies tonight and that way I can sort of have the, yeah, the swag open as well. Um, just quickly down here, I've just got some like electronics, I think I've got a headlight and just like a power bank and charge and stuff like that. Got a little hit flask full of tawny which is a must, and uh, then just yeah, a little speaker, because I like my music out here, which is not everyone's cup of tea, but each to their own. Um, just inside here, I've just got my metho stove, some metho, and just some cleaning up stuff, like a little scourer, and, a, and another little tea towel. Um, just a little small towel, just in case I need to wipe something down, because it's gonna be raining tonight. And then just my yeah, flint steel kit, and um, some tinder in there as well, so. Yeah, oh, and then also, Underneath here, we've just got my flannel. I've got 
my um, Shimag and then inside the swag. Oh, also, if you're wondering what kind of bedroll this is, this is um, made by Winchester. And yeah, this is a Adventure bedroll if you want to have a look at it. And we've just got my Cedar Summit quilt, a cinder quilt, and just a little inflatable mat. And then just a um, self inflating um, yeah, foam mattress. So. Oh, and lastly, just got my bushcraft knife, which is uh, made by Core Knife and Tool. This is the Bushman. And just a ferro rod as well attached to my belt. So, yeah, that's all my gear. Um, so, how about we uh, get the tarp up before it starts pouring? All right, now just for the ridge line, it's got a little loop tied to the end of the, the line. I'll just pass that around the tree. And then we'll just pass this line through that loop. So, it creates another loop. Let's put a stick through it. And just, uh, yeah, tension that down. It's a very nice, easy knot to get done. You just got to pull that out and the whole thing comes undone. Whoops, got to press record. Um, let's just do that again. All right, so we're just going to pass this line around the tree. And then with this, um, this line here, we'll just do a little trucker's hitch. And then with this line, we're just going to run that through the trucker's hitch. Actually, a few people told me to, rather than doing a little knot at the end, kind of you run this through the loop twice, when you pull on it, it sort of um, cinches down on itself, so we'll give that a try. Man, that's pretty good. <laughs> and you got to love the comments on YouTube, eh? Sometimes they're pretty bad, but quite often they're pretty helpful. So I had a few people tell me to do that, and... Yeah, nice and easy. All right, that's nice and taut, so we'll get the top over it. And that thunder is rolling. I think it's gonna pour any moment, eh? It's got that feel to it. Um, but anyway, this should give me plenty of cover for tonight. And uh, what I'll do now is I'll roll out the ground sheet and then we'll chuck the swag on top of the ground sheet and then we'll um, set up the box bug net uh, to try and sort of keep, keep some of those mozzies away. Also, just with the bug net and the ground sheet, it's also got these little snap buttons, so you can snap them together. And then the bottom of the bug net has a, probably about a 20 centimeter or so skirt, so that way you can sort of tuck that underneath and you've got a, yeah, no chance of anything sort of crawling in there with you. All right, well, she's all done. I'll give you guys a bit of a look inside. I'm actually very glad I bought this bug net, eh? So I don't know if you guys can tell, but there's so many mosquitoes on it already. Gosh, it's absolutely severe out here. Um, but yeah, at least I should be able to get a good night's sleep with this. It's pretty cool, like I said, never used it before. I've used like the bell-shaped ones, but this box one's pretty cool. It gives you a lot more space inside. Yeah, can you see how it goes tonight? <laughs> Bloody hell. Look how many mosquitoes there are. They are insane. Oh. Man. I really wish I bought some pants now. Bloody hell.
Right, we're gonna have a fire bat here. There's uh, quite a bit of leaf litter around. So what I'm gonna do is just um, yeah, be extra careful and safe and just clear a nice big sort of two meter circumference right around the fire. Oh, well, there you go. Got it back to bare earth and about a two meter circumference around the fire. So yeah, that should do. That thunder is pretty threatening, but so far there's been no raindrops, but I can see in the distance, really dark clouds. So I dare say probably in the next half hour or so, it might start raining. So I might try and, yeah, just gonna have a quick little fire just to cook up dinner. I'm expecting it's um, yeah, gonna rain pretty soon, so I'm not gonna worry about having it all night if I don't need to. I'm just um, gonna try and get a fire going and just cook up dinner. And if I can get that done, I'll be happy. Now, cause there's not a whole lot of tinder around here, Plus everything's still pretty soaked. Um, I've just got some, some fibrous material in here. This is from the cabbage tree palm. So I'm just gonna use that to, yeah, get the fire going. Bloody hell, man, these mozzies. I am absolutely crawling in them. Everything's a little bit wet, so it's a little bit difficult to get it going. It's a bit smoky. Like it hasn't stopped raining for what, about three weeks? So today was the first kind of sunny day, so everything is still just absolutely drenched. I'm actually surprised I could even get a fire started to be honest. sky is getting pretty dark, eh? So if we can try and build a better pot. Man, that mis- oh my goodness. Sorry, but these mosquitoes, they are massive. Bloody hell. But uh, yeah, we'll try and um, build up a little bit of coals and we'll get their fire, um, get the fire going, get their dinner cooked up. But I think I've earned myself a beer, so let's go grab one of those. Oh, she is sticky. To be honest, I don't think I'm even going to really wait to build up a better coals because these cards keep moving over and I'd rather cook dinner before it starts pouring, so... But burns are burns. <laughs> Look, I'm pretty used to burnt food but these days, so... Tonight I've just got uh, some crumb cutlets and some broccolini and some Dutch carrots. I did have some like mashed potato, like a packet mashed potato, but I honestly cannot be bothered to boil up the water and make that up. I think um, yeah, the broccoli and the, the carrots and the, the cuts are gonna do me just fine for tonight. Man, that just got dark so quickly, eh? It's gonna rain any moment. But anyway, uh, tonight we've got two beers, which is a bit of a treat for me. So first up, we've got the Grifter Pale Ale, which is probably my favorite beer. It's such a great beer. And then uh, next up, we got the Cornell Brewery um, Southwest Sour, which is such a nice drop. It's 
a bit interesting. It's not everyone's cup of tea, um, the old sour beers, but when I first had it, I wasn't quite sure about it, but after a few, it really grows in you. And honestly, it's just such a delicious drop. Definitely, um, especially during summer, uh, it's such a nice beer just to drink on like a yeah, nice warm day. So I might start off with that one, and then yeah, go off into the drifter after. Oh, that wind's just started to pick up. I'm starting to sort of move up this hill here. So I'm just a little bit cautious of the fire and any embers being blown off. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm pretty much going to dismantle the fire. I think I've got enough coals to try and get dinner cooked up. Oh, there's the rain as well. Oh, this is going to be a bit tricky, guys. <laughs> See how we go. I've also got my bottle of water and stuff next to me in case anything does sort of blow off in the, the distance, but I think we should be right. I'm just going to take off these veggies and we'll get the colours on. Alright, well that rain's starting to get pretty heavy now, so I might go grab a, a rain jacket. Oh, actually, <laughs> well, I forgot, it's right here. Pretty handy. Right. The one side's done, so we'll put that over. Oh, man, these look so bloody good. I am so keen for this. Even if it is raining, I'm still keen for it. However, the veggies. <laughs> Definitely look a little bit worse than where. Pretty burnt. <laughs> oh, just wish this rain held out for like 10 more minutes. <laughs> Starting to get pretty heavy. <laughs> See you, Mum. Bye. <laughs> well, can't get reception out of you. Nothing like a call from your mum on a Saturday night <laughs> just to check in. All right. Well, I think these cutlets are done, so let's heat that up. But first, I'm going to put this fire out. Oh man. Today. <laughs> Nothing has gone to plan, eh? It's an absolute disaster. But it is what it is. And to be honest, I'm actually slowing a really nice time. So. Right, I'm just chucking on some mint jelly onto the lamb cutlets and the veggies. You cannot beat mint jelly, eh? It is so good. Oh man, that rain is really starting to get heavy now, eh? So I'm just going to quickly eat this and then I uh, crawl back under the tarp. Oh man, you cannot beat lamb cutlets though. Oh, that is so bloody tasty. Yum, yum, yum. All right, well, that rain is getting pretty heavy now, so it's about time to put the camera away because that is only so waterproof. So yeah, anyway, I'll um, yeah, catch you guys in the morning. Oh wow, I don't know if you guys just saw that lighting just then, but. Anyway, as I said, see you guys in the morning. <laughs> Bloody hell, what a day. Well, good morning guys. So, last night, man, that was a very wet night, eh? That was absolutely pouring all night. It's probably one of the wettest nights I've had out in the bush, but I uh, managed to stay nice and dry under the tarp, and surprisingly, it's actually a really comfy sleep, eh? Um, the mat, this mattress is so comfy to sleep on, and 
just falling asleep to the rain on the tyre was uh, yeah, a really nice way to fall asleep. So not a bad night, which is surprisingly. And um, yeah, it's about 7.30 now, so let's check the weather report. We've got some reception. It seems like the rain is well and truly set in for the next week, so no chance of really clearing up. So it's probably about time we uh, stop dilly-dallying and get up out of bed and we'll um, yeah, get some break into us. All right, so time to cook up some brekkies. So I've just got my Tokes alcohol stove. I'll just add some metho to it. This is just my Pathfinder stove stand. And once again, a link to all the gear I use is in the description below if you guys want to check it out. It smells so bloody good, eh? So keen. Alright, well, I think that's about done. There we go. Well, the rain seems to have held off for the moment, which is good. Yum. Yum, yum, yum. I forgot some salt, so. It's gonna have to make too. Still pretty tasty, but. Oh man, that rain is really starting to come down. It is absolutely pouring. Um, yeah, that's probably one of the main reasons why I love sleeping underneath the tarp is the fact that you can pack everything up, you've got plenty of room to pack up, everything stays nice and dry, and then right at the end you just gotta take your, your tarp down. Whereas if you're inside of a tent, it's really hard to keep everything nice and dry because by the time you roll your wet tent up and you gotta set your tent up again the next night, the tent like, stays soaked and you're trying to put your bedding in a wet tent and I feel like everything just gets all wet. So having it like this way, it's nice and versatile. Keeps everything nice and dry in your bivy or your swag. And um, yeah, it's only ever that your tarp that gets wet and that doesn't matter because you just set that up and everything's nice and separate. So it's definitely my favorite way to yeah, camp for sure. But um, yeah, we'll get all this packed up and then yeah, we'll get the tarp taken down and <laughs> try and brave this rain and walk back out of here. It doesn't look very fun out there. <laughs> that little fold there, just put my chopping board, that's my saw.
right, I'll show you guys how to sling the swag over your shoulder again because that's uh, the biggest trick with this thing is showing you how to swing it. So just like grab that strap, put that on that shoulder, and let that bag come around the other shoulder. And with this tea towel, you actually spread it out a bit. Where it kind of shares the load over your shoulder a bit easier. So yeah, there you go. It's a pretty uh, unique and interesting way to go camping and hiking. Looks a little bit funny, but trust me, it's actually uh, surprisingly comfortable. You're not sort of slouching over at all. And with this thing, you can kind of swing around a bit. So what I've read, you can actually um, just tie a little bit of string and just uh, tie a bit of string from there to that corner and that stops it swinging around. Or you just sort of put it under your arm like I was doing yesterday when you're hiking. I like it, eh? <laughs> it's definitely a unique way to camp, but I'm very keen to yeah, keep this up and do a few more like this. Right, the time to get out of here. All right, boys and girls. Well, I think it's time to say goodbye. Look. I'm not quite sure about this trip, eh? Uh, it's a bit of an interesting one. I don't really know how this video is going to be turning out. Um, what started in the walk in at 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon isn't ideal. Oh man, yesterday was just an absolute disaster, honestly. Driving around in circles for hours. But look, anyway, it's still a nice night spent out in the bush. It was nice to test out um, yeah, the sort of mods to the swag. And I think this is a pretty good setup and very keen to do a few more trips like this in the future. And um, yeah, nice little night in the bush. Even though it was absolute pouring rain, it's still. It's a very beautiful little bushland to come and spend the night in. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, also, I want to say a big thank you to everyone who watches A because I think, actually, probably by the time this video is going to come out, I think I've cracked the 90,000 subscriber mark, which is pretty incredible. Eh? Like, oh, honestly, cannot believe there's 90,000 of you guys who actually like to watch me stumble around the bush. It's pretty insane. So, yeah, honestly, guys, I cannot thank you um, enough eh? from the bottom of my heart. I really do appreciate it. Um, but if you guys haven't subscribed, please do because I'd love to crack that 100,000 subscriber mark. Um, I'm almost there, just need a few more people just to hit that button. So if you guys haven't done it, please do. Um, also, if you guys get some enjoyment out of these videos and you'd love to support the channel, um, there's a Patreon link which is in the description below. And yeah, I think that's about it for this trip. So um, yeah, until next time guys, hooroo. Once a dolly